Hello again. So I'm back and I'm going to uh, be doing logarithmic functions in this unit, both uh, natural log and regular log of base 10. But in order to do that properly, I think it's best to uh, do a little bit of review on uh, the inverse of a logarithm, which happens to be an exponential function. Now the form of an exponential function can come in, uh, well, this manner really. y equals ab uh, to the x power. y equals ab to the x power. A is just the uh, number in front of the base, but it always has to be greater than zero for it to be uh, an exponential function, uh, either exponential growth or decay. That's all you really have to memorize here. It can't be negative because if it's negative, it's not going to be on this side of the x-axis. It's got to be on the top side of the x-axis. That's pretty much all there is to it. If the base is greater than one, it's exponential growth, which means it's going to grow. And if the base is less than one, the number that's associated with the x, it's going to shrink. You know, all you really got to do is look at the number that's accompanied with the x and you can tell. If it's bigger than one, smaller than one. And that's pretty much it there in terms of exponential growth and exponential decay. And I did two different examples where I do y equals 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x. I don't have an a term for either of these, but I do have a b term. The b term is 2 here and the b term is 1 half here. Since the b term is bigger than 1, it's exponential growth, and since the b term is smaller than 1, in this case 0.5 is smaller than 1, it's exponential decay. And I went ahead and I wrote my tables. The first table for the first graph, the second table for the second graph, just so you can see. And you can go ahead and either do this in your head or do it in a calculator or write it down. But 2 to the power of 0 is 1, and 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And then 2 to the power of negative 1 half, sorry, 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half, 0 0.5. So that's your plot for that one. I'll do this one in blue. Well, actually, I'll do it in purple. 1 half to the power of 0, that's the easiest one, is 1. 1 half to the power of 1 is 1 half, or uh, 0 0.5. 1 half to the power of 2 is 1 fourth, or 0 0.25. And 1 half to the power of 3 is 1 eighth, uh, which is 0 0.125. 1 half to the power of negative 1 is 2. Now when I'm going to graph these, I'm going to graph this first table in purple, and I'll graph the second table in blue so you can actually have an idea of what's going on here. And I'll probably be disappearing on your screen, but that is what it is. So at negative 1, it's 0 0.5, and at 0, it's 1. And at 1 it's 2, and at 2 it's 4, and 3 is 8. Graph looks like this, where it's getting really, really close to the x-axis as I keep going this way. Its domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range is from uh, 0, not including the number 0 because it'll never actually touch, all the way to infinity. And that's exponential growth. Exponential decay, on the other hand, is the opposite, basically. Zero, well, it's not, well, I guess you can phrase it like that if you want to. And I'll do this one first. Negative 1, 2. 0, 1, 1.5. 2, 0.25, and that. Now, as I keep going here, actually the numbers will get bigger. So if I plugged in a negative 2, it would be 4. And if I plugged in a negative 3, it would be 8, and so on and so forth. So the graph looks like this, except it's, you know, it, it's mirrored off the y-axis. And that's an example of exponential decay. Exponential growth obviously grows, exponential decay shrinks. And of course these examples are very useful. We already kind of covered this in uh, property of exponents, but you know, it's good to have a review because what we're going to do is logarithms, and that tends to be very difficult for students. All you really have to realize in a logarithm, uh, a regular logarithm, base 10, well, our, a base number that's not an E, is that we're going to be switching the Y and the X and then we're going to be solving for Y, which is really cool in my opinion and it has a lot of cool applications. But until that point, we'll do that. And I'll do examples off this one right here and associate with a logarithm, and then I'll do properties and ways to just solve and simplify, etc. And it'll be a nice basic introduction for logarithms. Obviously, with all of these lessons here, though, if you want to be the best math student you can be, Pay attention in your class, do your homework, you know, go to class every single day, and you're going to get better because, you know, the instruction that you'll receive in an hour a day is considerably better than 
you know, this, but this is just like a nice little refresher course of sorts. Okay, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.